Want your laptop to run cooler and faster? Does a battery life boost sound nice to you? If you answered yes to both these questions, buckle up, we're going under vaulting today. Welcome back everyone! I shared a video guide for upgrading the Lenovo ThinkPad T480's cooling fan to a dual heat pipe setup some time ago, and some of you requested me to go a step further and come up with a throttle stop CPU undervolt guide. So here we are! In today's video, I'm going to show you how I set throttle stop up for the various laptops I have over here. By tweaking the undervolt and speed shift settings, I was able to lower CPU temperatures, decrease power consumption, and in the case of the T480 and T15G right here, calm the cooling fan down. I'll also show you how I extended the power savings further towards the end of this video. Before proceeding, I need to point out that the scope of throttle stop's capabilities extends far beyond the topics we're going to cover today. I'll show you how to set up automatic profile selection, undervolting, and speed shift settings. But throttle stop can also tweak turbo, overclock, and other stuff, depending on your CPU. I honestly haven't tried playing with these settings, but I'll make a video to cover them when I finally do. That's enough of an intro, let's jump right into setup. I'm going to use the T15G to walk you guys through initial download, just because the touchscreen is so convenient. We'll switch to the T480 or T580 once we start tweaking things. To get started, you can download the latest version of Throttle Stop from Tech Power Up. I left a link in the description for your convenience, so let's hit download right here. And once you hit that, it'll ask you which server you want to download from, just feel free to click any of them. Once the download's done, you can extract the zip file's contents to a convenient location for system level files. There's no installer or anything, it's just a standalone exe file. I extracted the folder to the root directory of drive C. Inside, you can find the throttle stop application file, which will open now. Click yes here. We'll fix the settings to have this start automatically upon system boot later on, but it's best to not have that active and stick with manually launching the app for now. Switching to the T580 here, I deleted all the prior settings for throttle stop, and this is what you get when you open it for the first time. It's basically warning you it is capable of changing the performance of your computer and to use it at your own risk. So we click OK here. And this is what we get. Everything that I'm going to talk about today I learned through my own research, mostly from ultrabookreview.com's throttle stop setup guide. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. And while things have worked out fine so far, I'm all ears when it comes to setting suggestions. So if you have any ideas, please do share them in the comments below. Okay, back to the task at hand. Click options over here, and you can set up some really simple stuff. I don't really touch most of the settings here since they mostly involve UI, but you can see four fields under profile names here. It's called the first field battery. And the second, Performance plug. I usually just need two power profiles to set things up, and you can think of these four fields as profile 1, 2, 3, and 4. Keep that in mind because in the upper right corner here, you can activate this AC profile and enter 2 to have it automatically switch to our performance plug profile whenever a charger is plugged in. We can also turn this battery profile setting on and have it activate our battery profile once the charger is disconnected by keeping one over here. I don't touch the other stuff, but if you have a dedicated GPU and want its temperature shown on the main window, you can check these settings here and activate whichever corresponds to your GPU. Right, let's click OK here to save everything we've done so far. And click on these first two dots here to confirm that the names of our power profiles were saved. You know what, since we're doing this, let's grab the charger real quick and see if connecting and disconnecting it triggers the correct profiles. Yep, that works. And that means we can now dive a little deeper, but before that, don't forget to click save here and turn on throttle stop here. You probably want your plug power profile to deliver high performance and your battery power profile to sip as little power as possible. You can check this top box right here which allows you to assign a Windows Power Profile to each of your throttle stop profiles. It's up to you how you want to set it up. On the T480 and T580 with 8th generation i5 processors, both throttle stop profiles use the balanced Windows battery profile. 
and to choose the power profile for the battery program, you click here and hit the check mark on this one as well. And on a T15 with unhinged 10th generation i9 processor, I set Power Saver to be my default battery profile. I'll show you how to tweak these Windows battery profiles towards the end of this video, but let's stay in throttle stop for now. If you're dealing with modern laptops, most of the settings here don't really need to be touched. I haven't had the need to change them on machines as old as my ThinkPad W550S with Intel's 5th generation i7 processor. Again, if you want to learn what the other functions do, you can read about them in the ultrabookreview.com article I linked to below. One setting I highly recommend changing, however, is the speed shift EPP right here. So let's click the check mark to activate it and click save. This setting controls how inclined your laptop is to speed up whenever it's presented with a task. Higher figures reduce the CPU's tendency to speed up and create heat, while lower figures make it more eager to spring to action. The default 1 to 8 setting is supposed to be the middle ground, but simply turning speed shift on results in a drastic change. With speed shift off on my T15G over here, you can see package power here on the bottom and individual core temperatures over here spiking and spiking. But see what happens when I turn speed shift on. The i9 processor in this thing can now idle properly, and with lower CPU activity comes lower temperatures. Back to the T480 and T580, I set speed shift to 92 on the plug profiles and to 192 on the battery profile. 92 feels very snappy and 192 on the other hand has a bit of a lag in exchange for longer battery life. There's no correct setting here and you'll have to find yours by experimenting and iterating. So let's switch back to the plug profile here and click save. With the basics out of the way and now that we've saved our progress, we can click this button right here and turn our attention to what you probably came to this video for, CPU under vaulting. Aside from setting up these profiles, what we've done so far is change the CPU's inclination to speed up or stay slow based on the workload given to it. This certainly helps power consumption and temperatures, but we can take things a step further and actually alter the power consumption of the CPU at a fixed speed. That's basically what under vaulting does. Let's close this window for a bit. Before we start tweaking things, let's take note of our present idle power consumption over here, hovering right around 1.5 watts. Idle temperatures, on the other hand, sit at around 39 or 40 degrees Celsius. Now open throttle stops built-in benchmark by clicking this TS bench button over here. And you can see this TS bench window opening to the right. Now just to make sure we're on the same page, my usual settings are normal priority, eight threads, that's quad-core plus hyper-threading, hence 8. If you have a dual-core CPU like my W550S, it's gonna be 4 threads here. 120M size and fixed frequency. Once you confirm that to be the case, press start on the bottom to run our first benchmark. Take note of the frequency the CPU sells at over here. You'll notice that this will gradually increase as we undervolt the CPU. I'll call it at around 2850MHz for this cycle. Temperatures, on the other hand, hover around 60 degrees or 61 degrees Celsius. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. I'm trying to grow my subscriber count and really, really appreciate all the help I can get. And we're done. On factory voltage settings, the laptop finished this benchmark job in 24.528 seconds. Make sure your laptop's charger is connected, then click on this fiber button above TS Bench to open the voltage tweaking screen. While the ideal under vault settings for plugged and unplugged are the same, we want to work on the plug profile first and keep the battery profile's under vault setting at their default values. If we screw up and cause blue screens of death while we're iterating and discovering ideal settings, all we have to do then is restart the laptop and unplug the charger before opening throttle stop up to return the plug profile's under vault settings to last known good figures. This is infinitely more convenient than having to delete our entire settings file and jump back to the beginning of this video. Confirm that you're working on the correct profile on the upper left corner. As you can see, we have the performance plug profile selected. And then tick this unlock adjustable voltage box here. You can see a whole slew of settings under that, but we're not going to touch most of them today. We're only going to work with this one, offset voltage. Now most folks recommend setting this to negative 50 for both CPU core and CPU cache, so let's do that. 
Do the same for CPU cache, so click on it and also check unlock adjustable voltage and then set it to negative 50. Hit apply on the bottom right corner. Click OK save voltages immediately to make sure the settings get encoded into the setting file every time you hit the OK button, which we're gonna do now. After around 10 or 20 seconds, the CPU's idle power draw settle at around 1 watt or 1.1, while the idle temperatures are still pretty close at 39 degrees Celsius. Let's run TS Bench again. Right before every benchmark run, make sure your open apps are kept constant to keep your results accurate. In my case, I only have the usual background applications open, as well as a spreadsheet where I encode frequencies and results to hopefully make a nice graph later. For this cycle, frequency and temps are at 2970 MHz and around 61 degrees Celsius. With both CPU core and CPU cache undervolted by around 50 microvolts, the benchmark finished much earlier at 22.751 seconds. Keep iterating and recording data, bumping both CPU core and CPU cache lower by 10 microvolts at a time. You'll eventually encounter a blue screen of depth once you hit your CPU's limit. Let's show you guys that. The limit varies across CPUs of the same specification, so we click apply here. And there you go, the computer's totally unresponsive right now because I set CPU cache to minus 250 microvolts. When that happens, Unplug the charger, restart the laptop, open throttle stop again, and revert the plug profile settings to the last known good figures before reconnecting the charger. Let's go do that. Right, so we disconnected the charger, rebooted the laptop, and opened throttle stop back up. Open up the Fiverr menu over here, and you can see that we were defaulted to the battery profile, allowing us to correct and roll back whatever it is that we did to the performance plugged settings. Once you're able to restore your settings to the last known good ones, bump CPU core or CPU cache down individually and use your laptop as you normally would to figure out which one's the culprit. In my T580's case, the CPU core was able to be undervolted much more than the CPU cache without causing instability. You'll also notice that I didn't really touch the settings for Intel GPU and iGPU unsliced here. While other online guides often talk about bumping these down by 50 microvolts, I didn't really observe any tangible benefit from doing so. So that's basically how you undervolt your laptop CPU. Keep iterating and compiling data. We'll talk about my T580's results in a bit. I've done quite a bit of testing and monitored idle power consumption, idle temperatures, and onload temperatures across several core and cache undervolt settings. I also took note of CPU frequencies and benchmark completion times for the same benchmark settings that I showed you guys earlier. All the measurements were then compiled on a spreadsheet and converted into charts for your convenience. Let's start with this one right here. The leftmost entry shows data that we got right after turning speed shift on but before playing around with other vault settings. To recap, idle power consumption sat at 1.5 watts. Idle and benchmark run temperatures, on the other hand, were at 40 and 62 degrees Celsius, respectively. I also showed you guys how the initial 50 microvolt undervolt settings for both CPU core and CPU cache immediately lowered the T580's idle power consumption. As you can see on the chart, this trend continues all the way through the minus 150 settings. You'll also notice that both idle and onload temperatures were the downward trend, but the differences across settings weren't as apparent as what we saw with idle power consumption. This looks about right for my T580. The temperatures are already pretty low compared to other machines to start with since I reapplied the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU a few videos ago. Moving on to this chart, you'll see that the greater the undervolt, the higher the speed or frequency the CPU was able to achieve. That's because the T580 operates at a power limit of 25 and 15 watts during and after the turbo window. Undervolting the CPU allows the laptop to stuff more CPU cycles in given the same power level. You might be wondering why these charts end at minus 150 microvolt settings. I actually went beyond this and undervolted both CPU core and CPU cache by 160 microvolts. While I didn't get any blue screens of death or freezing, errors started showing up on my benchmark runs. I scaled both settings back one at a time and identified CPU cache to be the culprit. Keeping this set to minus 150, I continued pushing CPU core lower. The T580 was able to handle a CPU core undervolt as low as 250 microvolts, but improvements through this range were marginal at best. I decided to call it quits when the results started to go the opposite way from what I wanted. The same story can be seen on the benchmark CPU frequency and completion time chart. 
The 190 microvolt undervolt settings yielded the quickest benchmark time of 20.647 seconds. I set CPU cores undervolt 10 microvolts short of this to be safe. Since the last stable CPU cache setting was minus 150 microvolts, I set CPU cache to minus 140 microvolts and short again for safety. These settings kept idle power consumption at low 0.8 watts and idle CPU temperatures hovering around 36 or 37 degrees Celsius. During the benchmark, the settings allowed the CPU to hit 3245 MHz at the 25W power limit and complete the run in 20.902 seconds. We're right about ready to set the laptop up to automatically launch throttle stop whenever it starts. But before we do that, hit options over here and click start minimize. You probably want throttle stop running quietly in the background whenever your computer starts. So hit OK over here. And before we head on over to the Windows Task Scheduler settings, make sure your battery profile is selected over here. And now that we've finalized all the undervolt settings with the plug profile, don't forget to copy all of them over to the battery profile. So click Unlock Adjustable Voltage here. CPU core is selected right now, so we set this to negative 180. Or whatever setting it is that you finalize that. Hit CPU Cache. Click Unlock Adjustable Voltage. And we're going to set this one to minus 140. Let's do that. Hit apply over here. And hit OK. Hit the minimize button. And crawl stop should happily park itself in the system tray over here. Here we are, final stretch. To set throttle stop to run upon booth, hit the Windows button and type in Task Scheduler. Click this one. Wait for it to load. Click Create Task on the right side of the window, and this window appears. Under the name field, you want to enter whatever you want this to be called. Let's call it TS. Keep this setting right here. Run only when user is logged in and run with highest privileges. Move over to triggers and you're going to find a blank space like this. Hit new to set up a new trigger. Begin the task at log on. And you want to choose at log on here instead of at startup, just so that the throttle stop icon appears in the system tray. Because if it starts running at startup before any user logs on, you're not going to see the icon in the system tray. And if you want to change settings, there's no way to do it. You got to go in the task manager and task and start throttle stop manually by yourself. So make sure that's set to at log on there. No need to touch anything else here. Hit OK. All right, now we've set up the trigger. What do you want to do? You want this task to automatically start throttle stop. So start a program is correct. And then you browse to the directory where you save the throttle stop application at. So here, drive C, throttle stop, select throttle stop.exe. Open. No need to fill anything in here. Hit OK. Next, we move on to the Conditions tab. Uncheck both of these. You want throttle stop to start even if the laptop is on battery power. Next, we head on over to the Settings tab. And on this tab, you want to disable this one. Stop the task if it runs longer than three days. You don't want your laptop to automatically stop throttle stop. And other than that, you're good to go. If the task is already running, you don't want it to start a new instance. And hit OK to save your new task. Earlier in this video, I mentioned a bonus tip to extend your battery life further. So click here and click the battery icon. Wait for that to load. And if you scroll down over here, you'll see I have battery saver running right now and I have it to always be running. The default setting in Windows for this is to have battery saver active once you hit 20% battery. But I have it always running here to limit things running in the background. If you don't mind limiting things running in the background, having battery saver always running actually extended my battery life around 20%. So you might want to try this out. And there you have it. This is how I set throttle stop up in the laptops I have at home. If you found this video useful, please do consider hitting those like buttons down there and subscribing to my channel. I promise not to spam your feed with clickbaity thumbnails and the like. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.